Good evening, all. And I can't say good evening. First of all, apologies um, for a couple of reasons, actually, before I actually get started. One, because I'm not well. So if I have a croaky voice after tissue, oh, well, that's just me. That's just life. This shows I've got a good immune system. Secondly, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone that was for, for me the, the other day when I got law. Um, because mental health can affect people at any time, at any age. So to have that support, I'm truly grateful. And um, thank you. Tonight, we have got um, Dan Sadler. He is an international touring musician and educator for over 25 years. And while this was a very exciting life, Dan had very little respect for his body and experienced many health challenges along the way. Five years ago, he was introduced to the incredible profession of network marketing and to arrange a product that made him look and feel 10 years longer, younger. Longer? I don't know where the longer came from. I don't know. Um, Dan was keen to share his breakthrough and became very passionate about helping people with their health and to also create a part-time leverage income that can help their families enjoy life more. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Now, for the viewers, uh, obviously I'll get started with, tell me who you are uh, in the comments, where you come from, where you tune in from, and let's hear your story. That's what it's all about, ending this stigma. So, Dan, um, first of all, I'll give you a quick five questions. Go for to, it. Just to get things warmed up. Now, um, Pepsi or Cork? Can I say neither? Okay. I don't do fizzy drinks, funny enough. Right, okay then. All right. Um, all right, then. Tap water or filtered water? Filtered a thousand percent. And if you want to go one extra notch, distilled water that's been remineralized would be my go to. Brilliant. Cats or dogs? Oh, cats. I've got five of them oh, here. I love dogs as well, Brian. Yeah, we got five cats. Started off with two, two turned into six. Sadly, we did lose one last year. Um, but we have five super healthy cats here. They're all locked out of it. Oh, no, there's one down there. But um, if she might make an appearance at some point. I must be crazy then, because we've got nine. Nine cats? Dogs? No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So you don't have a house. They have the house, I guess. They, they just take over, don't they? I blend the misses. <laughs> right. Um, Favourite social media platform? Um, I would say Facebook. Uh, I get the most um, interaction, engagement. I built the largest network there. Um, it's just that like, you find everybody has their favourite go-to, but LinkedIn is creeping up, actually. I'm enjoying using LinkedIn. Uh, and yes. Interestingly, I never used LinkedIn before I joined a business network. So when I was getting a sick and tired of like bashing my head of who can I talk to about my business? Who can I, who can I, um, where can I find clients and customers? And uh, when I found the business network, I went over to LinkedIn one day and I had like 400 connection requests there because I've been <laughs> going to these meetings. So it, like it started itself. I just jumped on. Brilliant. And the last one I'm going to say, Pop or rock? Ah, oh, definitely pop. If it's pop or rock, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I like a little bit of slow rock, like say a good bit of Bon Jovi or Aerosmith, like those that kind of the ballad rocks, the soft rock, I would call it. Yeah, but bon I'm a Caribbean music specialist, so I like styles of music like soca, calypso, um, reggae, all these kind of Caribbean styles. They've just got a much nicer groove to them. Yeah. Right, so for the viewers, um, just tell us a little bit of a backstory of who Dan Sadler is. Okay, right, so let me tell you my uh, story. I'll, I'll do the, the recent chunk, like, so we say the last five years since I've been doing what I'm doing. Because before that, I was struggling with my health. Right, I'll do a brief bit about before. Um, I was great at school, um, really great like i got 10 a to c's gcse's um passing the flying colors didn't really put much effort in 
So by 16, I felt quite like good about myself and where I was headed. Then I went to college. But by age 21, I'd actually dropped out of college three consecutive years and I couldn't find my groove in life for a while. Um, I was a talented young musician, which is um, what I was most passionate about, kind of getting my musical story out there, going to gigs, touring, um, recording, all these kind of things that I wanted to do. So my instrument is the steel pan. Uh, I started by learning to play the flute, learning to play the drums, but I had some really forceful teachers that stopped me from being creative and free, and they forced me down a road of read this music, play that note, hold it like this. So I'd let my flute drop and my teacher would whack me and I'd go Hoop, and lift it back <laughs> up again. So it's like, I didn't get what I wanted out of it. All I wanted to play was songs I was singing in the choir. I was seven years old. So I wanted to play Cauliflowers Fluffy and Cabbages Green, for example. So I went home and taught myself some of these little tunes. Uh, even there's a little flute solo in a song called California Dreaming. And I was inspired by music. So I learned it, I it. myself. I was only seven. I went back to my teacher and said, look what I've done. And I got psh, got told off, got smacked down. Um, but you haven't learned what I told you to learn. So I ended up quitting flute after about three weeks. I did the same when I was 11 with drums. Anyway, so I kind of, I was progressing as a musician. And when I got to 14, 15 years old, my music teacher just said, look, you got to do something. She shoved me in a room with a load of steel pans, a few girls from my year, and we just started learning songs. I didn't need to read anything or write anything. I was just there. So that the reason I'm telling you that story is because that led me, when I was failing through college, I was actually very good as a musician. I was teaching other kids and adults and junior school kids community projects to play yeah. the steel pans and to play drums. Completely unqualified. I was only like, I was 16 when I started teaching, but I had this skill. So. That was me up until age 35, touring with bands, um, touring with groups that I was teaching um, and performing all over the UK and becoming an educator. And 2009, we had a big credit crunch in the UK, 2008, I think it was. And I had to leave everything because I lost everything. So I kind of got rid of the car, got rid of my home and I got on a cruise ship with my steel pans and a couple of my mates and we just toured the Caribbean on a cruise ship for six months. Felt like I was going away forever. But when I came back, I'd kind of given up all my teaching work. I'd given up all the, the network that I'd built. And there was other people doing my jobs. So I couldn't just come back and say, that's mine, that's mine. I ended up working in restaurants, pubs, bars, because that's all I knew. When I didn't have anything, what do I know? Go back to, my mum was a publican, a landlady, and I used to help her in the pub quite often. So naturally I went back into that world and it wasn't until about I was 33 years old and I was starting to feel like I'm not enjoying my life. My health was declining um, and I, I, I wasn't getting the work that I wanted. So I decided to jack it all in the restaurants, jack everything in. I was living in Portsmouth at the time and I made the move up to London and it wasn't an easy start. <laughs> like When I first moved into up to London, uh, my health was declining. I wasn't getting any younger. Um, my like my hair was falling out and like I was I was just on this like aging decline I was stressed I was living month yeah. to month I was 35 years old by this point and I had no family close to me and very few friends up here in London I was sofa surfing and things were very 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 tight it was like the month would always run out before the money and I was thinking mm. scratching my head like I've moved up to London where I can get more work more uh into the community of the steel bands but i was still struggling i was wondering if i was ever going to get my lucky break then something completely unexpected happened i got a phone call off my dad out of the blue and he was over in florida um and it's not the type of call you ever expect from your parents but inevitably this kind of thing is going to happen to all of us at some point um he'd had a major health scare with his heart and with his arteries and um, pumping the blood around the body it wasn't working very well and he was living in Florida, as I said, so I couldn't afford the time nor the money to get out there and see him. And while things were improving for me, like financially, I wasn't in a place where I could drop everything and get out there and see him. And that was when I made a massive decision in my life. So um, this is where we are now. I mean, this is how I became a biohacker. Uh, it was yeah. through my dad's transformation and through my dad's recovery that I was became very interested in natural homeopathic healing and remedies. And I started to do a lot of research. 
Now, I had this ongoing issue with my stomach that I managed to eradicate with uh, cabbage. So cabbage has a rare vitamin in it, which can it repair stomach lining. It's powerful. It's called vitamin IU or UI or something like that. Anyway, I got 15 cabbages and I juiced them and I was drinking four pints of cabbage juice a day for 10 days. And I found this in a study that had been done on prisoners to reduce inflammation of the stomach. And it worked a trick for me. And at that point, I have my big epiphany. Do you want to know what it was? Go on. All right. So I got really excited about a, a natural pill that reduces what we call oxidative stress. Yeah. Oxidative stress is probably um, responsible for the people going into disease processes or age related disease processes. Yeah. When you break it down, it's the imbalance of the bad guys, free radicals and the good guys, antioxidants. And when we're younger, our cells produce tons of these antioxidants, all varying kinds, every cell in your body, all 37 trillion of them. And I got excited because I know that as we get older, that declines. And when that's declining, yes. that's where the door to disease opens. Yeah. So if there was a way to possibly stave off that aging door from closing on me and I could keep hold of what youth I had left, then I was excited. So the proof was there if you knew where to look and Fortunately, I knew where to look. I found all the right information. However, um, I was running around the place telling everyone about this amazing technology and telling is selling. And I was putting off a lot of people. I was burning a lot of bridges. Anyway, so fast forward a little bit to today. Um, I knew all, all, all along that I was open, that I was coachable. I had a big enough vision to make this work. But I wasn't really addressing my, still I wasn't fully addressing my health issues, um, my mental health issues, not having people mm -hmm. close to me that I was that were familiar. So you know that air of familiarity when you go and see a fam your family at a party and everyone's hugging and smiling and laughing and it's like, just that familiarity. I didn't have it. And I, I kind of went into a little bit of a slide. So um, that's really my story. Where I am now, I'm at a point in my life where I've gotten my health in check. I've gotten my mental health in check. I've been okay. super consistent um, with biohacking, which is a word we're going to discuss, I'm sure, in a minute. Uh, I've been super consistent with it because I've been able to feel the benefits along the way. So, so let's go back to the cabbage story. Yeah. Now, I've shared something on Facebook. I think it was a couple of days ago um, or a few days ago. I can't remember these days. Um would you agree that cabbage can cure arthritis and muscular pain? Um, I wouldn't say that it can cure arthritis and muscular pain because there's there's there, there's quite a hefty world uh, around compliance with health claims and treatments. The last thing yeah. I want to do is to get your video pulled from YouTube, but um. <clears throat> How I would, what I would say is there's, if there's research out there, you can go to this place called PubMed and you can literally okay. find loads and loads and loads of studies. It's pubmed.gov. It's the American Library of Medicine and, uh, and Scientific Studies. So this is how I helped myself and managed to reverse some of the damage in my stomach. Um, in terms of arthritis, and what, what was the other thing you said? Muscular pain. Muscular pain, possibly. Yeah. But the only research that I did on, on the cabbage was the relation to the stomach and yes. stomach ulcers particularly. Um, I didn't actually have ulcers. I had just very bad inflammation down there. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, I've actually just found it now. I shared it 18th of April, so two days ago. And it says, did you know wrapping your leg in cabbage can relieve joint pain, arthritis, inflammation, and swelling. Wow. Well, I mean, that's a possibility. What I would do, my science head would actually go away, dive into PubMed, and I would be like, I don't have a good research on it. I would. Um, because these there, there is so many things out there that we can do for our bodies. Um, yeah. This is why I'm this is why I'm so keen. Oh, wrong side, I'm so keen into my biohacking. Um, because it's it's like do-it-yourself biology. Um, all the studies have been done. We've unlocked the entire human genome. Now it's a case of just learning what we need to stimulate to get certain results. Exactly. That's what biohacking is. 
It's, it's about using natural approach to make your body work better. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I'm actually one for example, because growing up, I was constantly in and out of hospital every six months because I was so addicted to medication. I've now not touched medication in, what, four years? Congratulations. And I've actually used this podcasting as an alternative. This is a great medicine. Smiles, chats, and it keeps no you busy, right? Of, of course it does. Of course it does. So, um, so obviously you came away with education, with school, uh, good GCSEs. And um, what did you do after that? Well, like I mentioned, is that college didn't go very well for me. And it was just a case of like the music completely drowned out everything for me when I was younger. I just wanted to make music. There was a girl in my school, um, she was in my year group. She was the, when I first went into the room, she was like the student leader in the band. She was the one that put herself forward. She's the one that picked up all the teaching work in the first instance when a couple of jobs came in, but she didn't stick around in the project for very long. So very soon these jobs became available and I was inspired by one of my peers being able to create a musical arrangement from her brain and go and show this player how to play these notes, go and show that player how to play this chord, show the bass player how to play this riff. And they were basically, she would pull together an arrangement. So just like a pop song with guitars, drums and bass and a singer, but she would do, we, she did the same thing with the steel pans. So because I had a musical mind, Adam, this just made, my, made me explode. I was like, whoa, I can actually pick songs that I like and put them into, into steel band songs. And, and that's what I did. So really and truly, like that was me all the way up until 35. And I still am a teacher two days a week teaching the pans. I still do gigs when we're allowed. But fortunately, I made a decision five years ago. And look where we are in the world today where musicians can't work, teachers are sometimes in, sometimes not, sometimes in, sometimes not. So I can't really rely on that as a stable future. Yeah. So five years ago, I made a decision to start a business and it was probably the best decision I ever made. Yeah. I'll scratch my head because I'm, I'm asking myself, why is this guy not written the book? <laughs> All right, too many projects on the go, my friend. Too many projects on the go. <laughs> I am going to get to the book, right? And I've got a couple of people that I met in the business network who are okay. also helping you bring your book to life. So if you've got all these ideas in here, um, what they keep saying to me is, you've got a book in you. You've got a book in you. Or you've got two books in you or more. But you've got to be in the right place to get that book out. Yes. You yes. can't just say, right, I want to, I want to write a book. And it's there. It needs yeah. to serve a purpose. A good business book is not your story. No. When people write their story, often as their first book, it's because that's the thing that they can resonate with the most. It's the thing they feel the most comfortable with sharing. But here's the trick. Everyone that I know that's written their story as their first book, they often don't release it because it's too personal. So by the time you penned it out, it's way too personal to share. And a lot of people, they, they, they then go and write something else. And they might eventually publish their story. But for me, it would be all about business book. If I could, I'd write a business book and a health book, a biohacking book, because yeah. that's important to me. Yeah, you should um, also coach people, even if it's via Zoom or something like that. Bring all these people together. I'm like, right, we're going to learn music. <laughs> it's um i do do some um lessons on zoo interestingly there's a friend of mine in america called linda who i met on facebook it turns out she is from the country where the steel pan comes from trinidad and tobago but she lives in america on the east coast and i'm living in london we connected on facebook and first of all we connected about the health stuff we connected about biohacking we connected about herbs and healing and natural stuff then i figured out she was from trinidad and i dropped it in there that, well i'm a pan player well she's a pan player too so we connected on so many levels and not only do we work together in the in the in the business now um i also give her a weekly pan lesson on zoom so we are actually doing these things brilliant um but now what i'd like to do is potentially you mentioned coaching no i don't feel like i'm a coach um I have to coach people as a part of my day-to-day -day life in business. 
but to actually set myself up as a coach. Uh, I'm incredibly comfortable in the industry profession, sorry, of network marketing okay. because I don't, all I have to do is to build my business and show other people how to build theirs. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple process where I don't, I'm not in control of the stock. I'm not in control of the customer services. I'm not in control of the pricing, the websites, the invoicing, the systems, everything else. That's all dealt with by the company. My role in the company as a, as a distributor is to distribute products. And I'm very, very comfortable in that world. That's where I see myself growing. Did you know that the profession of network marketing is the second largest profession in the entire world? Wow. It's bigger than the NFL and the Premier League combined. $200 billion globally gets spent through network marketing companies. Wow. No, I didn't know that. Set to go off like that as well. They reckon within, by 2030, that will be at over like oh. a trillion. So my next question is, I'm just looking at your bio here. You are now an emerging as a leader within his company and his mission is to activate one million people. Yeah, that's right. I want to activate the whole world. Okay. All right, have imagine. You got a have you got a time scale for that? That's my, my question. Um, there is, I have goals with time scales on them. In order to get to a million people, I need to do a lot of work, a lot of these, a lot of yeah. this, talking to people, a lot of sharing what we've got. Um, imagine, right, imagine you've got in your hand, you've got the answer to all, all the world's problems. And you've got this little egg that everyone, what everyone needs, but nobody knows about. So this egg is so fragile that, that you can't just chuck it at someone because it will crack. It will, yeah. it will crack all over them. So it's so sensitive. You've got to kind of share the egg and pass it around. And this is what we do. This is what the profession of network marketing is best at. Sharing things, stories, person to person. Sharing videos, person to person. Enlightening people and sharing what we have. Now, um, I'm genuinely passionate about activating people, but your audience might not know what that means. Do you want me to explain it? Yeah, go on then. Okay, I'll try do and do it. Don't leave anything out, Dan. I will leave try and do out. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and do it in the most non-sciencey, geeky way. I'll try and keep it like uh, as like analogies. Okay. Um, imagine your 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 body is a house, and your house is on fire. Okay, it's flames coming out the windows, the front doors burst open. There's just flames everywhere. Right now, imagine that's your body, and your body is inflamed and you've got all these issues coming into your body. Well, right. your body has the ability to work for you or work against you, and it depends what you put in. So imagine, right, you've got, you've got a punnet of blueberries, which is the most potent known antioxidant food in the world. And a portion of blueberries, a daily serving, will give you about 7,000 antioxidants. Well, your house, your, your body, has 37 trillion cells and every single one of those makes oxidants or what we call free radicals the bad guys so your 7000 antioxidants is going to do nothing to the like the trillions of free radicals your body is producing every single day you produce them as a, a, a via energy production you produce them when you well, in fact you consume them when you eat foods and when you breathe oxygen because oxygen is also a scavenger and it pulls something out yeah. of the air that doesn't work very well in your body. So while it keeps you alive, it degrades your cells. So imagine then, so that punnet of blueberries is like chucking a cup of water on the house fire. It's going to do nothing. What we've learned is over the last like 15 years is that our bodies have the ability to produce these protective enzymes like they did when we were younger. So pre-20, between birth and 21 years old, you're growing your body's producing all this good stuff. And after 21, that's when things start going south and issues start creeping in. That's because every single year, your body's ability to produce these enzymes gets depleted by about 1% a year until you hit that point where you're, um, you, you've got more free radicals than antioxidants. And mm. at that point, your body is, is in a really bad state. So activation is when you put something in that engages with the cell, the cell sends a message to the nucleus and it creates loads of antioxidants or 
it creates new mitochondria, which is your energy production. So we've actually now, we've got the understanding and the ability to be able to stop that door to aging before it slams shut in your face. <laughs> so oh, it's yeah. like holding off the aging process because um, when your body stops producing these enzymes, you decline very rapidly. So I'm not a nutritionist, but I have got nutritionist contacts. I know them. Um, obviously, we all got brought, brought up to say, um, to hear we are what we eat. Mm -hmm. Now, I've learned that's actually a bit scandalous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that word because cool. actually we are what we digest. Now, would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Why? Well, all right. Everything that you put in your body is going to have a positive or a negative effect on okay. your cells. Everything that goes in and gets digested and gets passed through the stomach all food does is it absorbs into the bloodstream and then something happens. When the cells are affected by the nutrients, so the vitamins or the minerals or whatever's inside, the phytonutrients that you need to be healthy, everything that you put inside is going to affect it. So if you're going to eat loads of McDonald's and drink loads of Coca-Cola, this is why I don't drink fizzy drinks. Um, I drink black tea, for example, rather than milky tea because... The milk's not great for you. It's one of those things that has a negative impact on your body. Um, so I've contradicted myself. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, we've all got these things in our life. Like my my vice, I'm not going to lie to you. I've got a, a plate of cookies here that I'm going to eat after after we've spoken. Um, I've got a couple of cookies there for my tea. That's my vice. So I, I put things in my body as well that have a ne negative detrimental effect. But then there are ways that you can stop these things from damaging your cells like as you, you you told me earlier on you don't really like pills and pharma pharmaceuticals well they have pharmaceuticals do the same thing as what biohacking pills and and formulations do they switch things on or they switch things off in the body so it's the same with food it switches something on or it switches something off and it depends on what I you like put it. in as to what happens in your body i mean i'm not a nutritionist and i'm not a scientist and i'm not a doctor i'm gonna get that out there I'm somebody who's done a lot of self-studying. I used to be 18 and a half stone. Now I'm about 12, 12 and a half stone. I don't know what I am. At an ideal weight. And do you know what? I haven't weighed myself, Adam, for about three years now because I genuinely don't feel the need to. Um, for the first time in my whole adult life, I'm regulated. And that See, has to be something to do with what I'm doing. See, for the last two years, I wanted to weigh myself, but... Um, ever since I actually wanted to, I'm like, first of all, scales, they're not always that accurate. Like the bathroom scale, they're not always accurate. Uh, there's one that, but then every time I'd want to go and do it, like it, like where I am, there's a local boots and you can go and weigh yourself. It tests your height, your um, BMI and stuff like that. And I'm like, I go, out, I go outside, I'm like, I want to go in. But there's that anxiety, that barrier that stops me. And I can't get through that barrier. I know exactly how you're feeling. Um, reminds me of when I was very, very young and my mum used to take me to the pharmacy. And I was always happy to get on the scales because I was a little skinny little boy up until about age eight. And then I grew funny. Um, I grew too fast. My muscles, uh, my bones outgrew my muscles in my legs and I was unable to exercise. That was when I put on weight as a child. And I'd never forget when my mum took me, she marched me into the pharmacy and she told me to get on the scales and I refused. And my God, did she give me hell. I did get on the scales eventually and I got a hide in as well. Um, but I wasn't happy because I knew that I'd put on weight and I was embarrassed. So it's, it's um, I guess at the start of lockdown, I did put on a little bit of weight myself. And what was going through my mind was, I need the gym. I need the gym. Oh, my God, I need the gym. What I did about it, couldn't get to the gym. I had to make a decision. And the decision was, stop eating so much crap. Rein it in a little bit. While you can't get out there and do your exercise plan, just rein it in. And I did that. So I've been doing that for the last six months, and I've just gone, <whistles> again. <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, biohacking led me to weight loss. When I started taking um, these, these uh, activators, let's call them, 
my cell health improved over the period of the first 12 months that I was taking it. And I hadn't really paid much attention. I was also, I decided somewhere along the line there to go more plant-based. Okay. And to clean up the diet. I mean, I'm not vegan, um, but when I say clean up the diet, I mean eat more organic foods, less processed foods, less um, packaged foods, less microwave foods, more home cooking, more fresh. If we can make it, let's make it. If we can juice it, let's juice it. Like we, we flipped. What happened was when we flipped the switch in ourselves, we started making healthier decisions. That led to like a massive amount of weight falling off me, like six stone. When I was plant-based at the time, and I think my lowest weight was 11 stone. I was too skinny then. Uh, I'm six foot, so I've got quite a big frame. I think my ideal weight is 12 and a half to 13 stone. Um, and that's where I'm at. Yeah. See, I used I used to be uh, like hovered between five foot ten and six foot one myself. So I am a tall guy, but I'm shrinking. You're that shrinking. Could, I am actually shrinking, and, wow. and that could, I can't remember last time I, I tested my height, but I think that's down to stress. <laughs> stress is a big thing. Stress, right? So you see the word I mentioned earlier on: oxidative stress. Yeah. Well, that's like um, physical bodily stress. That's stress your cells are crying out. They're like, help, give me some good stuff, help. Yeah. Now, stress, as you described, is up here. It's in the mind. Exactly, but yeah. People who are stressed normally suffer with oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is a precursor to stress. So if right. you can fix that stress on the cells, it has a knock-on impact on your focus, your mindset, and your kind of like, um, ability to be able to shut out the negative, shall we say? Brilliant. Yeah. Lot, uh, my my problem with mental health was the self talk, the negative self talk, the disbelief in myself, comparing myself to other people, it led me down a dark hole. So in order to lift myself, I've had to make a lot of changes. It's way more than just mental health. The physical part of it is just as important to get right. We need to talk after this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You can call me up anytime you like. Exactly. So, um, so obviously, again, for everyone that's just tuned in, this is Dan Sadler. He is a biohacker. Re replay this. My camera keeps falling. I don't know why. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, yeah. Uh, replay from the start. He'll explain what a biohacker is. It's not a guy that hacks into people. Yeah, um, not anyway. a computer hacker. <laughs> Um, hello, Ashley Collins. Welcome. Um, hope you are well. Now, um, please share this in awareness because we're not just talking about our physical health, we're talking about our mental health as well. Because not very little people actually realise that they're actually connected to each other. And not, not they don't. They, they think they're two separate departments, but they're not. All linked. They are like linked. That. They are like that. Yeah. So it's a case of your body is a, is a, is a system. It's all interconnected. The mind is just one part of it. Um, so, for example, right, here's a great example. When people start to put on weight, often they are eating too much or eating too fast or both. So when you eat really, really fast you have the ability to be able to fill your stomach before your brain has had a chance to get involved and say, whoa, stop, you're full. So you know that full up feeling that you get? Yeah. If you eat slowly, you eat less food before you get there. So this is why I put on weight as a youngster and why I continue to put on weight because I was picking the wrong foods and I was eating way too much of them and I was eating them too fast. Yeah. So like, this connection between the brain and the gut is probably the most important connection in the whole body because your body, as I said, is a system and it works intrinsically together. See, I have actually learned, I have actually learned, and I'm, I'm going to come across uh, something else, what you've never heard, never knew that, just eat slower. Yeah, you're right, actually. Um, that I, used, I, I can eat half a bag of uh, those peanuts. I, I can eat them, but then I always want something like an hour later. But I've noticed that eating a watermelon can actually fill you more than eating half a bag of peanuts. Do you want to know why? Go on. 
I'm guessing, like, I'm not a nutritionist either, but the watermelon is high quality water. Your body is made up of like, I think it's 70% it water. Um, the human cells in our body, the actual things that make us human is about 10% of what's inside of us. Like the human cells are not much. We're mainly bacteria and water. And that that's the truth of it. So when you're eating high quality, particularly organic watermelon, um, it's not being sprayed or treated and you know it's a pure fruit, that yeah. is gonna fill you up. And here's a trick, if you're ever feeling hungry, and you want to perhaps eat less or you want to go on a bit of a weight loss journey yourself, always drink, when you get that hunger thought, like, oh, I could do with a bar of chocolate. Oh, I could go and eat a packet of crisps right now. Whatever it is, whatever your go-to is, just go and drink a glass of water. Now, if you're still hungry 10 minutes later, then you're actually hungry and get some food in your belly. Right, I would say. If you're not hungry and you're just bored and your brain's doing like, your brain's kind of tricking you, then go and drink some water and see if you can trick your brain because it's possible. Hmm. But it's hard to remember all this stuff when you're. No, that is crazy journey. because when you've just said that, I went, hmm. But at the exact same time, Ashley commented the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ashley, hello. I can see you in the comments there. Excellent. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, our, our body is made up of water. And um, often, we, <laughs> she's laughing now. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. <laughs> she's actually not from UK either. Um, so yeah, it's great. It's great that you're here. Uh, that's brilliant. I'm just I'm just trying to fire up uh, a little bit of research. But if anyone can find out how much our body's actually made up of water, percentage-wise, the statistics that'd be fantastic. And and yeah, we'll just go from there. But yeah, it's all it's all about keeping our lives in check it's 60 percent just found out from dr google um <laughs> here we go up to 60 percent of human adult body is water um wow. here we go the brain and the heart are composed of 73 percent water and the lungs are about 83 percent water the skin contains 64 percent water and your muscles and kidneys are 79 percent even your bones have 39% water. Well, there's some facts for you. Um, there you go. There you go. Hey, if it likes that, a little bit of Dr. Google, why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, we can't, I, I, genuinely, I would love to be able to talk in much more detail about the world of biohacking, but it does step into the medical world a little bit. So, again, we have to be fairly careful what we say publicly because I'm not a doctor. So, um, but what I do have is a mobile phone, a pretty sharp brain, and access to the world's information. So this is how, if you're on a journey yourself, um, a top tip for anyone who listens to this, if you're on a health journey yourself, I would say that all the information that you need is out there, um, but Google may not be the best place for it. Google is a, is a, I don't know, it's like the elephant graveyard on the Lion King. Don't go there. Um, I would use Google Scholar or PubMed or, I mean, you can search on Google if you're quite savvy and you can de detect what is like a load of crap and what's really good information. Um, there's a lot of counter uh, arguments on Google about I all of this trust stuff. Google. I wouldn't trust I Google. Because, because if you put like, for example, if you put that you, <laughs> I've just got statistics now. Um, if you put all oh, the symptoms of that you got a flu, it says you've got it says you're gonna die in seven days <laughs> it does not it? oh my goodness yeah i mean right. i would never look on the first page of google you know the first thing that pops up normally it's the it's the one that's been sponsored the most it's the piece of or it comes from somewhere like wikipedia and the bad thing about wiki is that anyone can edit wikipedia so oh yeah um and i just see ashley's just commented i'm going through a massive health crisis right now you had to stop googling symptoms because it was making you worse absolutely don't google sy symptoms symptoms are um again pubmed pubmed.gov p-u-b-m-e-d pubmed.gov go there and put in your um condition your health challenge your illness your symptom and you'll find a lot of studies now not everyone can understand them when i started i struggled a little bit 
but I was persistent. I kept reading it. And then I would, where Google becomes really interesting here, Adam, is that when I was finding out like this pathway in the body or this nutrient or this vitamin that I was reading about and I didn't know the word, then I could go to Google and punch in the word. What is free radicals? What is ROS? And you find out actually that's the same thing reactive oxygen species, free radicals or oxidants, it's the same thing. Yeah. So some studies use different terminology, but Google was really helpful in that sense. I was able to use Google to help me understand studies. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, and so say well, the statistics I've got when it comes to water, um, obviously, like you said, 60%, but according to H.H. H. Mitchell, Journal of Biological Chemistry 158, the brain and the heart are composed of 73 percent water the lungs are 83 percent water the skin contains 64 percent water muscles and kidneys are 79 and even the bones are 31 percent i think we found the same article there <laughs> <laughs> that's the same stats that i got so did you know that your skin you mentioned the skin did you know the skin is actually an organ it's yeah. the largest it's the largest organ in the body it is, yeah. guys if you're going through health challenges I'm not saying this is gold dust, but your skin gives you indications of not always, but often you'll get some kind of inflammation through the skin. And that's a precursor, a warning sign that something might be going on a bit deeper in the body. But you know your body. So if you're feeling something, um, get yourself into PubMed. Start looking at some of these alternative therapies, these biohacks, as I call them. Um, I mean, Adam, just to give your people an idea of what biohacking is, would you like me to just reel off some um, simple, free, effective biohacks that people go can just add into go their normal day-to-day -day life? Yeah, go for it. All right. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on these because this is like a, literally it's a 20-minute talk. But um, I'll give you an overview. So bio means life and hacking is optimization so it doesn't need to be difficult time consuming or expensive it can be simple or even free so here's my top tips hugging releases happy hormones cleaning your water quite a controversial subject but ideally we all need to live near a mountain spring and if that's not an option well bottled water is better than tap and as we discussed earlier adam um tap water is probably the lowest of the low if you can even have a filter it's better so to get out in the sun every day gives you some free vitamin D, um, and that's fantastic for them for your mind as well. Uh, grounding is an ancient practice of going barefoot and connecting with the earth. So you can actually draw those free electrons out of the ground into your feet and into your body. Mm -hmm. Impressive, right? Smiling. Yeah. When you smile at someone or someone smiles at you, sorry, what do you do? Exactly, smile back. Smile back because a smile is infectious. It also releases the happy hormones. Um, you can it's called a yawn. The yeah, yawn as well. it does. It does. Yawning feels great, doesn't it? I don't know why, but yawning feels great. Um, so, right, <laughs> moving your body, exercising, even just walking will help. Uh, going organic with your veggies and fruit will cut out all the harmful Dan, pesticides. Dan, well, Dan, I'll just stop you there for a minute. But actually, yeah. you've made a valid point, and I totally agree with you. Should we walk on sidewalk barefoot or grass or both? I would definitely say mainly the grass or barefoot because, end of the day, you are connecting your body to nature. And nature, it, it, it goes straight there from your feet to your mind within seconds. Honestly, you can do some of these things together. So you can go for a walk to your local forest, take your shoes and socks off inside the forest where it's much more peaceful and calm and you've got the trees blowing and the birds singing. And when you're in there, do a little meditation, which is also another free way to hack your body and your mind. Um, and you can take your shoes and socks off and ground while you're there. I wouldn't say the I would say the pavement is definitely not the place to be grounded. You don't want to be grounded on the pavement. It's still earth because obviously the tar has been pulled up from the earth, but it's been reformulated, turned into this thing and slapped back down on nature. So you can still get the electrons through it, but grass will be much more impactful there yeah. for sure. So, I mean, that's just a few things that you can do. Um, blue light blockers for your eyes. If you want to buy um, some of those Bono glasses, I uh, don't really like Bono, but he was biohacking from a long time ago. Do you remember he had the orange and red, yellow tinted glasses? Yes. Well, they actually block blue light, which is really good for your circadian rhythm, helps you sleep right. better, you repair better, and you wake up 
better. So, I mean, there's there's so many night, you, I mean, your phone, you could put it in airplane mode at night. You could put your night filter on so it's easier on the eyes. There's so much you could do. Honestly, just turning your shower cold is another thing. It will. Oh, I cells. do that all the time. Do you? I can't do it. But fortunately, I'm doing... cold. I'm uh, not about the cold, but if I'm in a sauna or a steam room and there is a cold dipping pool, I will go and do it. But I don't like the cold. I don't like the cold. Ooh, the sorry. best, the best time to go for a cold shower is when your anxiety is through the roof or your depression is at its lowest. It's mm. the best time to go for it. Ten if, minutes. That's all. If, it you like me, if you're like me and you struggle with it being cold or getting into the cold, like for me, I'm a warm-blooded creature. I love the Caribbean. I would live in the Caribbean if I could, um, or somewhere with that climate. But if you haven't got access to that, just Go into a warm shower and just turn it down a touch and then down a touch and then to make it colder, 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 colder until it is cold. Um, I find lukewarm works for me uh, and I have to leave it like that for a couple of minutes. But again, like I said, I rarely do it because exactly. I have these activators that activate these same pathways for me. So therefore, cold showers aren't relevant to me, um, but they are to most people out there. Exactly. Exactly. So, my final question for you, Dan. Where do you see, not the company, but where do you see Dan Sadler, the biohacker, in 12 months' time? Oh, in 12 months' time. I've got this written out as a goal. I'm going to have helped so many people that I will be um, financially secure so that I can quit my teaching job. I'm going to put it out there. I'm not going to be a teacher forever. And sorry if one of my teachers from school ends up watching this. I'm not going to be a teacher forever. So within 12 months, I want to be fully retired from my job. How am I going to do that? I'm going to continue to bless the world with my amazing activators, these little things. I'm going to continue to build the business network and help other business owners create sales. And I'm going to do one more thing that this is actually an announcement. I've never I haven't told anyone this publicly yet. Come on. I'm launching a biohacker brand t-shirt brand so a t-shirt and hoodie brand um, and it's all about being hacked and being activated or being bionic uh, anyway a few words that we're playing around with I've got a graphic designer who's been fantastic at producing these these designs and I've got a lady that's actually producing the shop for me as we speak that should be ready to go live next week so um, where am I going in the future I don't know I'm just going to help an absolute ton of people along the way and we'll see what happens brilliant and on that note thank you for coming on oh you're welcome thank you for having me it was a lovely chat it's gone so fast it is it is hey time flies when we're having fun <laughs> absolutely yeah. so please share the hell out of this this is dan sadler the biohacker uh do you know what yeah where can we follow you where can you follow me? Okay, I was just about to interject and say, oh God, don't don't finish it yet. All right, Instagram, at Biohacker Dan. That's not my main place though. Facebook, slash Dan Sadler UK. Um, that's my main personal profile. I still have room for people to add me as a friend. I've got about a thousand spaces left before Facebook cap it. Um, so there's room there if you want to come and get in on my world, or even if you just want to follow and have a stalk, I'm more than happy with that too. But guys, get involved. Find me on Facebook, find me on LinkedIn, find me on Instagram. And I, I am on YouTube too, but I, I don't use this platform like you're using it. So YouTube's ace. It is ace. It's really, really, yeah, it's a tough one for me, all these platforms to manage. So um, for me, my home, you can find me the most often is on Facebook. Get yourself a website. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon I'm going to have a t-shirt brand website. Um, I may well incorporate it all into an umbrella website. I do have a website for my biohacking stuff. Um, but again, that's, they're all very separate projects at the moment. And at some point, I guess it will all pull in. But thank you for having me, Adam. It's been a pleasure to come and share this with you. You're most welcome. Please do not be a stranger. Absolutely not. Well, you got me now, haven't you? So I've got you. I've, yeah. got, I've got my claws into you now, so I'm not letting you go. You yeah, go. we're mates now, so... Exactly. So thank you for everyone tuning in. Please share this. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe because we're here to end the stigma.
So bye for now, and please join me tomorrow live 9 p.m. when I am going to be joined by the brilliant Lee Garrett. We are going to talk and we're going to end this debate. I can't believe I'm saying this, but debate on vaccine passports. Ooh, that's brave. <laughs> I might have to tune in for that one. That would be a I... real ace debate. Catch you later. Bye.